He's a part of the Big Ten Network, played at Michigan, was in the NFL. Jake Butt joins us now with Craig and Paul. I'm David Smoke on 365 Sports. And, of course, the news on Friday, uh, not just the four corner schools, but Washington, Oregon, headed to the Big Ten next year. Jake, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Joshua Perry, highly recommended you, so we appreciate you being a part of the show. What was your reaction when it kind of flipped the switch on Friday with Oregon and Washington? You know, first off, shout out to Joshua Perry, man. Both, uh, we're both from central Ohio. He stayed home. I went to Michigan. We were, uh, <laughs> friendly enemies when we were playing and now I've gotten to know each other in the media space. He's a great guy. So if you guys are friends with him, you guys are friends of mine, but my reaction, I, I almost, I mean, you're always surprised, but to me, I feel like we've all seen this coming. Those that have been involved, the, the dominoes have started to fall and, and it felt like an inevitability that, there would be further expansion, even going back to last year um, when USC and UCLA were added in. So um, with that being said, I think the popular thing is to say, hey, is this good or is this bad? Everyone has an opinion on that. Some people say it's good. Some say it's bad. My opinion is slightly different where I say, hey, going back to if this was inevitable, which I believe it was, which a lot of people believe it was, that I'm not going to put a label on it and say if it was good or bad. I'm going to look at what is it, and man, am I excited excited to add two big brands to the Big Ten Conference, and boy, am I excited as an analyst to cover those two teams. And shoot, who I, we're all tuning in in November when it's Oregon traveling to Columbus to play for a Big Ten title, or Washington traveling to in, in Ann Arbor. It's got that level of implication. So as a football fan, I'm excited to see those matchups. What do you think this means for, I mean, you got to bring it in to, well, Two powerhouse schools, schools that have already been winning. What do you think this means for them as they transition to that conference on the field? Will, you, will they be able to maintain that right away, or do you think that there'll be a, a, a drop for them? Well, so I think context matters. They've been winning. Why have they been winning? Well, I expect them to continue to win this year. Why is that? On one end, they both have new head coaches, and both those head coaches have programs in a, trending in the right direction. Really, even USC and UCLA all have new head coaches, relatively new, some newer than others. But if you look at Oregon and Washington, both of them have Heisman-level quarterbacks this year, Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix. But both of those guys will be gone the following year. So the first year that they're joining the Big Ten, they're going to be replacing Heisman-level quarterbacks. So those are the two biggest pieces. On one end, I expect them these coaches to stay into that transition, on the which is good for them. On the other end, you're replacing your two quarterbacks. Once you figure those two things out, the rest kind of falls in line. So for me, it'll be, I, they're, they're, they have all the resources to recruit and be competitive, but it's how quickly that quarterback replacement can get in there and, and uh, elevate their team's offense. Jake, when you hear about certain changes that are being made, do you think of it from the student-athlete perspective first or the analyst part of it first nowadays? Because I just wonder that you've got – Insights that a lot of us don't have on on travel, for example, that's been a, a much debated point with this move and, you know, going cross country and doing all those types of things. Just uh, having been out of the game and, and being a part of the media, do, does it still come to mind first student athlete or kind of how do you view these things? Well, as an analyst, I think I have to take all things into consideration. Right. That. As an analyst, I have to think about the student athlete. But then again, so – it's not just football because football is just an athlete is different than basketball is different than baseball, softball, volleyball. Right. So I made the point when we, when this first broke um, about cross country travel, I played in the NFL for four years. You know, I, I took some cross country trips in my time, you know, my first game ever uh, in the uh, Jim Harbaugh era, we traveled out to Utah at elevation kicked off at 8 PM or seven 30, whatever it was local, which was nine, 10 o'clock Eastern. We, Whenever the game wrapped up, it was 1, 2 in the morning back local time for us. And I, I made the point that it didn't affect anyone on the play. It's not like we were falling asleep in the fourth quarter, right? The adrenaline kicks in. And, and from a football standpoint, only traveling once a week, and you're not going to be traveling coast to coast every single week. It's, it's manageable. I don't expect it to be – it's obviously harder. It, I'm not going to pretend that it's easier. It's obviously harder. But I don't think it's going to make a, a, a noticeable difference on any of the football players, um, you know, the, it's going to be on the coaches at that point to tweak the schedule. Now, the other sports, that's where things are going to be interesting, especially because, you know, they're, they're flying 
standard airport operations, right? They, they have to go through security. And mm-hmm. I wonder if with this money, if they can find a way to charter flights for those other schools, because that, that certainly will make a difference, right? My fiance played lacrosse at Michigan and, you know, they had to be the airport three hours before check-in. And, you know, we, as a football player, we walk right onto the plane and take off. So it just adds your travel time as well as the, the sheer quantity of games. So, Long-winded answer, but the truth is, is this is not. I can't give you one specific answer because this is a complex situation. Mm-hmm. I know the loss to TCU stung and probably still does. But how much have Wolverine fans, former players, alums, enjoyed the hell out of the last couple of years of beating Ohio State? Well, I can tell you, it's, I think it's great as a guy that played for Coach Harbaugh and watched, you know, our first two years certainly didn't reach the ceilings that the current guys had, but at least got that national level of respect um, in 2015, 2016. That continued for a while, and then COVID kind of hit a rock bottom, so we saw the polarity, the good and the bad. So as a guy that played for him and as a guy that knows how much he wants to win and, and loves the University of Michigan and loves his players, I think it's great, if nothing else, to see him get the credit that he deserves. I mean, Anyone that was saying this guy's not a good coach probably should have their football card revoked. They should probably never be able to talk about football again. The dude's proved it time and time again. But if if you needed more convincing, these past two years have done that. And I, I think the players are a big piece of this as well. Just J.J. McCarthy had a tweet when he was being recruited in that 2020 season, the COVID year. And in the world of recruiting, certainly we see a lot of flaky commitments, a lot of – commitments that are on sand rather than stone and JJ could have left when the program was in turmoil and he he made a tweet that said I promise I vow that this will never happen at Michigan again and of Mm. course he he played a part alongside Cade McNamara but these guys have came together and whenever there's adversity there's a fork in the road and for these young college kids college kids get a lot of slack these days man they get a lot of slack but these guys 18 to 22 years old to, to stare adversity in the face and then to go do it again next year um, which was last year at this point, have a chance to now do it three straight years. I think you got to give credit to them as well. Well, Jake, Michigan is preseason ranked number two by the coaches. And if you look in the top five, I think they're the only one that has a returning – well, they and, and LSU are the only ones that have a returning quarterback. Everybody else is going to be rolling out somebody new, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, all rolling out new quarterbacks. Now, while they'll all probably be good – I mean, that's how things go. Yeah. But how much of an X factor is that for Michigan to try and take that final step that they have J.J. McCarthy in his third year as a college football player uh, where we haven't really even seen his best ball yet, and he's played some pretty good ball? Yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it, it can't be discredited. And that's where I, I honestly think you have a case to put Michigan as number one, though I, I don't think putting them at two is a bad ranking. But, um, yeah, we, we, we haven't seen his best ball consistently. But we have seen it at times what he's capable of. I think the only thing limiting J.J. is the fact that Michigan, with their schedule and their offensive line and their run game, they can sleepwalk running the ball 40 times to 8, 9, 10 wins, you know? So that prevents us from seeing J.J. go out there and put a consistent Heisman-type performance together. I think if Michigan wants to succeed and and end this year as the number one team in a a national championship team, they're going to have to let J.J. air it out. We're going to have to see that potential – and that capability earlier in the year more often. So um, the the, the quarterback piece can't be discredited. But as soon as you say that, for all those other teams, every team in that top five has recruited the best players in the country year in, year out. And what you know whenever you're introducing a good quarterback is that sometimes the pieces around them that can help them succeed. So the, the fact of the matter is for Georgia, for Ohio State, for Alabama, Boy, they got talent all over the field. So whoever that guy is, it's going to be a, a smooth entrance rather than trying to carry a team of uh, guys that may not be quite as proven. Jake, we appreciate your time. I hope you don't mind. We'll try to lean back on you again as the as the season gets underway, maybe a, a couple more times before the end of the year. Anytime, guys. Thank Anytime. You. Great talk. Jake Butt, former Michigan and NFL tight end, also a part of the Big Ten Network on the additions of Oregon